Good morning and welcome to the Ward Silla booth. We have our expert series now starting on emission fundamentals, formation reduction, and control. This presentation will take about 14 minutes and include an overview of several different functions of this particular topic. But first, I want to emphasize that Ward Silla is not just engines. Although we have a wide variety of engines, including two-stroke, four-stroke, across a varying power band from smaller vessels to the very largest ships. We also include quite a wide variety of other products in an integrated solution for many of our customers. Mechanical drives, propulsors, including the wet end of the propeller and the controls from the bridge and everything in between, large CP, fixed pitch propellers, nozzle, water jets, special high efficiency rudders, the complete packages. We have automation and now ship design with several hundred professionals in that group and environmental technologies as well, where we <coughs> have selective catalytic reduction as well as other scrubbers for the marine market space. So today the agenda will be the current legislation. We'll take a quick look at exhaust. We'll have three very short, concise matrices that talk about the formation, reduction, and control technologies in a very, very compact way. We'll take a quick look at the leading engine technologies as well as then consider value mapping analysis of a case study on some of these to determine how do you run from a technical side to an engineering side of business bang for the buck. On current legislation, history of the IMO ratified in 2004, retroactive to year 2000, and then several progressive, iterative, incremental changes to reduce, reduce, reduce the emissions. I want to point out the Baltic Sika, 1.5% sulfur in May of 2006. The North Sea Sika, 1.5% sulfur in November 2007. Now we're out to 2011 and beyond. The regulations that IMO proposed were based upon the engine RPM and a NOx requirement, the restrictive threshold. The first threshold here was the Tier 1 with a band of NOx running and commencing the 1st of January 2000. Since then, re more recently in January 2011, we've gone to a near two tier limit with a 20% reduction across the board for all engines. But soon, in 2016, there will be a tier three limit, which represents not 20, but an 80% drop in NOx emissions across all engines being operated. So this requirement for the international legislation is all focused on NOx. In the U.S., this treaty had to be ratified by the Senate and then signed by the President, who did so in the summer of 2008. President Bush signed this into law, was ratified and enforced on 8th of January over two years ago. What's happened more recently is that the U.S. and Canada petitioned and have in place now an ECA extending 200 miles off of our coasts and most of Canada forming a bubble over the entire geographic region which requires very low sulfur fuels to be used effective date August 1, 2012. It's different than the CICAs of the Baltic Sea and the North Sea that we saw in the earlier diagram. Those earlier versions focused on sulfur the ECA removed the restrictive sulfur requirement and it now is sulfur first in 2012 with NOx and for U.S. flag vessels PM in 2016. It's more restrictive. It's important because this has major implications for all vessels that come in within U.S. waters. Enforcement is done by the United States Coast Guard under this policy letter. Basically, they are the enforcement group for the EPA. If you have a U.S. flag vessel, you have different circumstances in that the EPA has categories of engines one, two, and three based upon the cylindrical volume displacement for one cylinder, not engine RPM as is the case for the international standard. So you can see here there's a very different way of categorizing engines with much more strict standards coming in more rapidly. Take a quick look at the exhaust components compare, compared to ambient air. You can see in exhaust we have nitrogen representing the majority of both. 
then the oxygen component, then we have a carbon dioxide component exhaust that you don't see in air, a little bit of water that's been produced in some ar argon as you find in air. So there are some differences here that obviously are going to be focused on in the emissions, particularly nitrogen. These are the components that you find in the exhaust with more of a definition. I want to just point out that not only is NOx, SOx, carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons, and volatile organic compounds concerned, but particulate matter is the reason why they have all this sulfur restrictions coming forward. The sulfur and the ash in the fuel are what generate particulate matter, which the EPA has determined is a carcinogen. And, and that, in the conjunction with the fact that sulfur, as it comes up the stack, if it hits a, a point where it begins to distill out, you can form sulfuric acid, which means after treatment components will have a much shorter life. Those are the two reasons why particulate matter and the sulfur content for longevity of the active device's lifetime is it's been restricted. This next three slides are going to give you a complete, short, compact way to understand how things form, the reduction and control technologies in the marketplace. This is kind of like studying for the exam in college. What the emission is, the cause, formation, and reduction. The three major ones that are focused on. Nitrogen oxides, oxygen dissociated nitric oxide in the combustion zone. Exponentially temperature dependent, but also the residence time. And that's what's important because everything that reduces NOx typically changes the temperature of combustion. Changing the temperature of combustion reduces the NOx. You lower the temperature of combustion, you have a less efficient engine in the end. On particulate matter, you can read this, and on hydrocarbons, similarly. But for formation reduction, here's one slide that can help you see everything in the market and what it means and how it works. Control technologies, charge air cooling, fuel management and its ways, and injection timing and how it can be done. The means, the target, and their effectiveness. Basically, charge air cooling is good on NOx at a small amount, but also increases the efficiency of your engine. On fuel management, you have rate shaping, multiple pulse injections, or common rail. These also attack NOx. Injection timing retard, delaying the combustion start, and shortening the premix phase attacks NOx. So with these fundamentals and the second chart, exhaust gas circulation, induced tick mixing, selective catalytic reduction, and water injection, you now have the complete market space in front of you, which is following these engineering fundamentals. All these slides are available. We have them today, so you're welcome to take, it, take them with you. On the last one here, we see we'll be talking about these in particular in general. They're all put, focused on NOx, which is the IMO standard. Leading engine technologies. They're principally the primary and the secondary ones. You can look at an overview here in this chart. If you look across the board, the more stars, the better. Kind of like the, the full four-star general is the best. If you look at these carefully, you can see that actually conversion to gas has got probably the best answers across the board of, of any of the different means of pursuing reduction of, of your primary emissions. The dry means, the wet means and the, at the engine, after the engine, and then fuel choice. How much reduction of NOx? Greater and even more. So there is where the three areas will, will reside. But if you look at all of this, how do you make sense out of the technology and convert it into a business decision? Here's an important chart to remember. Everything to this side, brake specific fuel consumption is good, it's improving. Everything to this side in red, brake specific fuel consumption is bad, it's deteriorating. Almost all systems go from neutral to bad other than two, selective catalytic reduction or after uh, heat recovery, to attack NOx, the different amounts of effectiveness of the NOx that they can do. But you notice almost everything causes a fuel penalty. So let's take a look at one e exhaustive study done in this regard. And this is a summary table of the output that they got looking at a series of 
values spread over time in a spreadsheet with a net present capital cost hurdle of 15% brought back to time zero. They have the technologies that were evaluated, the NOx reductions, and the net present value. That's taking the CapEx along with all the future operating savings at 15% hurdle rate. Well, how do you make sense out of this? It looks like you've got some good candidates, but are, what is really the best? Consider using value mapping. Relative performance against relative price. Relatively low price, but high performance, you are in the superior green box. If you have relatively less than average performance at a higher price, you're in an inferior point where it's the red box. We just take these values, we begin plotting them out on this chart in the relative performance versus relative price position. There they all are listed, and here they're tagged on the, on the plot. Selective catalytic reduction plotted out at very high in performance, modest cost above average. So that's someone who would like a performance-oriented opportunity to proceed. If you consider this one is also being fairly good at decent performance and just slightly above average cost, coming at this direction instead of the more fervent direction, Water fuel emulsion, big problem. Can you withstand how much water it will require? Significant amounts. Well, look at where the other ones plot out. Injector upgrade, number three. This is the line of neutrality between performance and price. Position four, combustion air, humidifying it. Again, dropping the temperature combustion. So-so. Five and six, pressure changes with fuel after cooler upgrade. Seven and eight, definitely not so good. Injection timing weak card and engine derating. You can see that these are often employed by manufacturers to drop NOx. Less than average performance, higher than average cost in the inferior band. So I think this chart can be used to help make sense of these types of studies. And that concludes the presentation this morning.